Hi everyone! So this is going to be a very quick video showing you all of the things that I made in the year 2020. So I'm going to do a quick try on of all of the everything that I made. Granted, I did make a couple of mock-ups this year that didn't turn into full-fledged projects yet, so I didn't include them in this video. But everything else I made, or at least everything else that I think that I made, I might have missed something, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is everything, is in this video, so if you want to see everything, then go ahead and keep on watching. The first project we're going to talk about is this really fun little jellyfish skirt that I made. I decided it was going to be my birthday project this year. So this is made out of a white linen and tulle. It is a circle skirt, but even more importantly and much more fun, uh, there is an EL wire light up element to this, so it lights up. And if you are interested in seeing how I made this and my thought process behind it, there is a video up on my channel which I will link in the description below. The next project I worked on were my masks, because this is 2020 and, you know, plague. Um, so mine were triple layered cotton, and then I painted some designs over it. I made more than just these, but these were all I had in the house, because all of my regular ones are in the car. In my effort to not bring any unfinished projects to the new house when I moved, I dug out this uh, quick little upcycled uh, suede mock-up and I made a little jumper out of it and I also have a video about this if you are interested and I will go ahead and link that also down below in the description. And the shirt I am wearing with it is this little blouse. It is Simplicity S8445. It is a modern reprint of a vintage pattern and I made it out of this quilting cotton from Joann's in a nice Cherokee rose print. It had a little it was a little weird, but I also have a video all about this in case you are interested. I will go ahead and, you guessed it, link that below in the description. On my lower half is this fun little skirt. This is Simplicity 8458. Uh, it is an A-line skirt with this little apron attached on the front, and it is made out of a brown pinstripe, some kind of polyester. Uh, it was from my stash from before I actually took care to mention <laughs> what kind of a uh, fabric I have. And I have a video about making this, which, surprise, surprise, I will again link below in the description. And to go with that skirt, I made myself this little bow blouse from a true vintage pattern, which for the record is So Easy by Advance, number 3077. This was from the early 60s, and this is made out of a sustainable viscose woven from Mood. This fabric is very thin and was kind of a pain to sew. Um, because it shifted a lot and it was also very thin and tended to snag on things. However, I really loved this blouse. I liked how it came out, I liked how it fit, and I was very lucky to find it, or to find this pattern in a flea market near me, and I liked it so much that I made it again. So this time I made it out of a rayon batiste, which I also got from Mood, and instead of a safari print, this one has sea creatures on it with some seahorses and turtles and shells, so for this displaced marine biologist it was Oh, obviously a perfect choice for me. And I finished this so late in the game that I was sewing on the buttons so that this would be ready to wear for this video. And uh, this is the first time I'm actually trying the finished blouse on and I am so happy with how it came out even though in the cutting process it, this fabric was so slippery and it shifted so much. Um, it was again a pain to work with. Now this blue dress is also a true vintage pattern that I found at my local antique store. Uh, for the record, it is McCall's 8468, also from the early 1960s. And I made this out of a stretch cotton woven that I ordered from Mood Fabrics. This is a very thick, um, very, very thick cotton, uh, but it works out. I think it holds the shape pretty nicely and I lined it and faced it with this white linen. Next we have this manta ray cape, which I also made a video about, which you can find, you guessed it, linked in the description below. And this was a cape that I made to go to a Sharks After Dark event at Georgia Aquarium. So this is made of a polyester coating. I don't know, they didn't have a label on it in the shop I went to, it is lined with a uh, gray wool flannel, not wool flannel, cotton flannel. 
but this is a very special piece to me because this is was what I was wearing the night that I got engaged. So this will always have a very fond place in my heart and it also is secretly a manta ray. If you've been following me this year, then you know that I had a very big move, and part of that was trying to consolidate all of my stuff as much as I can. So I made these shoe bags out of all of my remnants that I like to binge buy from Joann's. Um, so I had a lot of leftover fabric, and I made these little bags that have separate pouches that you can put each shoe in a different compartment so that one doesn't scuff the other. And guess what? I made a video about these too! Link in the description below! Next I moved on to some stash busting projects. These are very recent so I won't go too much into them because they are the last latest videos on my channel. First I made these little tea envelopes out of some scraps and some fat quarters that I had in my stash. Then I also went ahead and made a brush roll again out of some scraps and fat quarters that I had in my stash. Um, I did use this brush roll the last time I went home to visit my family. It's very convenient, I like it a lot. And the final project that I made in the year 2020 was this entirely self-drafted black gown. Um, gown isn't really the right word, it's more of a cocktail dress, and I promise it zips up all the way, I just can't bend the way to do it by myself. It was 3 in the morning when I was recording this. So the bodice is self-drafted, and the skirt is based off of McCall's M7184. Oh yeah, I, I forgot I wanted to talk about these. I made these things this year, which uh, if you follow me on Instagram over at Thread and Needlefish, you will have seen already, but I had so much fun making my little um, EL wire skirt that I also made some EL wire art. So I have this one, I have, I have this one. And I also have this one, which I'm really proud of this one. And that was everything that I made in the year 2020. Looking back, I wish it was a little bit more, but I think we can all agree that the year 2020 kind of sucked away all of our creativity and just all of our motivation to do anything. So even though I know I am one of the lucky ones and my life has remained relatively unchanged, I have not gotten sick. All of the people that I know who have gotten sick, either old friends and family, they have had relatively mild cases, so they're doing well. I know I, I have a lot better than a lot of people in this country right now, in the world right now. I have been unemployed since May? But I do have a parent who is able to financially support me. I do have some savings that I, I can survive for a little bit longer. But even with all that taken into consideration, it was, it was a rough year. Another big reason my productivity this year was kind of low was I moved. So a lot of my time and energy between the months of like March and July had to be dedicated to moving all of my stuff from one state to another. The good news is now I have a full room dedicated to sewing and crafting, so I can just lock all of my mess in here and not have to worry about cluttering up my bedroom. The downside is I now live in a very tiny little town in the middle of absolute nowhere and there is nothing here. And I really am trying to make the best of a bad situation, but all of the things that I normally would do to go out and meet people and make friends, like getting a new job, joining a new theater company, maybe finding a local swing dance group. Yeah, those things don't really exist this year. Things are looking up. Hopefully by this time next year in 2021, things will have changed. Hopefully for the better, we'll be not quite back to normal, but we'll have a new normal where hopefully a lot of things change and a lot of things get better for a lot of people. And you know what? Quite frankly, I, I would be okay if strangers don't get within six feet of me anymore. Can you believe we used to do that? Like we used to just like cram into crowded areas with people we didn't know and just breathe all over each other. Like 2020 was also not particularly kind to my waistline um, because even though with all of my exercising and trying to eat right, somehow I managed to gain 
35 pounds this year, which means a lot of clothes that I made last year don't fit. Even some of the clothes that I made in the beginning of this year don't fit, which really, really took a toll on my self-esteem and also my productivity because I really didn't want to sit down and make clothes and put effort into making clothes if I hate the way that I look in them. Anyway, I have a lot of exciting plans for 2021. Um, I'm not sure how much of them I'm actually going to get around to doing. I'm not sure how much of them I'm going to be able to show you guys, at least, you know, right now, because I do have a wedding dress that I need to make, uh, so that will be a secret until the grand reveal in the fall of 2023. I know one of my goals for 2021 is to get out of my own head and to just make things, not to try not to overthink things too much, to try not to psych myself out, um, and to stop myself from even wanting to start. So that's one of my goals, is to just, just make. Even if it winds up being absolute garbage, just make it. I mean, 2020 wasn't all bad. I mean, I got engaged. My ring is next to my sleeping fiancé, and I won't wake him up. I think all things considered, I did make a decent amount of things, and I think the quality of the things that I made was pretty good, if I do say so myself. I have a whole dedicated sewing room now, that's pretty cool. I feel like I'm starting to kind of nail down my video editing process. I also started myself a Redbubble account, which I will also link in the description below, amongst many other things that I mentioned in this video, if you want to check it out. I also hit 100 subscribers on YouTube this year, so that was that was pretty fun. I'm very happy to be in the triple digits, finally. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure like 60% of you are bots. But you know what? I'll take it. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me for honestly this entire year. I've had a lot of fun making all of these videos for you, and I've actually felt really good about myself reading comments when you say things like, oh, I'm making this pattern and your video helped me so much, thank you for doing this. Um, like, it, it really does make me feel good and it makes me feel that even though my videos are only getting, I don't know, 60 views each, like, grand total, um, just knowing that even if I helped a couple of people, just a handful of people, it really, it really helps. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like what I'm doing is worth it. So thank you for being along for the ride with me uh, this year. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked that, and if you want to see more, if you want to see what I have in store for 2021, go ahead, give me a subscribe. Yeah, YouTube is subscribe. Go ahead, consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up on this video, leave a comment, all that good YouTube stuff. And hopefully 2021 will be a much better year all around for all of us. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye.